consider the following problem on orthogonal projections. So we start with R2. We have the standard inner product on R2. I'm going to pick a vector w equal to 1, 1. The problem, I want to find the orthogonal projection piece of w onto the span of our vector 1, 1. And I want the orthogonal projection onto the orthogonal complement of this subspace. Once we've done that, we want to verify the following properties for orthogonal projection. So we'll want that each p squared is equal to p, p equals p transpose. We'll want that p sub w plus p sub w perp is the identity. And if we take the products in either order, so p sub w times p sub w perp, they're both going to be equal to zero. Finally, to verify, I want to decompose one zero into the parallel the perpendicular directions to one one. Now, our motivating prototype, so we have R2 with the standard basis, and we'll consider the projections along E1 and E2. Okay, so if E1 represents okay, our subspace W, E2 is going to represent the orthogonal complement of W. Now, if we want the projections here, okay, I just write down a linear combination. If I want to project onto the part that's in the direction of E1, well, we just peel off the second piece. So we get C1, E1 in this case. In terms of matrices with our basis, we get 1, 0, 0, 0. On the other hand, if we project onto the orthogonal complement, we're just going to keep the part with the E2. So I get the matrix 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, you can verify the following identities for P1 and P2. P squared is equal to P. P1 plus P2 is equal to the identity. Then if we take the product in either order, P1, P2, equal to P2, P1, we get zero. Then finally, we have that P1 is equal to P1 transpose, and same for P2. Now, how do we interpret? Well, for P squared equal to P, okay, let's take a look at, say, this equation here. If I apply P twice, what are we going to do? We're going to peel off the part with E1, then I'm going to peel off the part with E1 again. So if I peel off the part with E1 twice, it's the same as peeling off the part with E1 once. So P squared equals P. Then, if we peel off the E1 part and the E2 part, put them back together by summing, we wind up getting back our original vector. So that just says the sum of P1 plus P2 is the identity. Finally, we take the product in either order. If I project down to P1, then project down to P2, okay, so projecting down to P1 takes away the W per part. So if we project down to the W per part, we're going to have to get zero. And then same if we do it in the other order. Now, the last one's a little bit tricky. So here, okay, this equation we want to interpret in terms of our inner product. So, we want to focus on this part and this part. Now, what do these say here? Well, in this first slot, this is saying, take our vector v, throw away the w per part, take the inner product with w. So what's going to happen over here is we're not interested in the part that's in w perp. So we'll get the same answer as if we stripped off the part that's in w perp here, and then took the inner product with v. So, not too tough to believe that the two things on the ends are equal. And then the way that we get the transpose into the picture is just by pushing the P1 to the other side. That becomes P1 transpose. So if this holds for any V and W, then these two operators here have to be equal. Now, how do we get the formula for P sub W? We note that we're really trying to solve a diagonalization problem. So, on W, we're going to send each vector to itself. So those are eigenvectors with eigenvalue 1. On W perp, we're going to take each element, send it to 0. So there we have eigenvectors with eigenvalue 0. If we choose a basis for W and W perp, then we'll have a diagonalizing basis. Now, we want that diagonalizing basis to be orthonormal. We'll be able to do that because we have W and W perp are orthogonal subspaces. So if I choose an orthonormal basis on each piece, put them together, it stays orthonormal. Now, 
Once I have that basis, here's how we get our formula. So we note, if I want to diagonalize a matrix, the rule is, we're going to take the matrix of interest, we're going to multiply it by the matrix of eigenvectors, which I'm calling Q here, so that'll be V1, V2, where this is our orthonormal basis. On the other side, I put Q inverse, and then when I work this out, we get our diagonal matrix. Then it has the eigenvalues going the diagonal in the order of our basis here. So for PW, push the Q and Q inverse to the other side, and we have this formula here. Now, one thing I noted, we need to use an orthonormal basis to get the symmetric property. So for that, what we note, if we have an orthonormal basis, then our matrix Q is orthogonal, so Q inverse is equal to Q transpose. Now, if we transpose this equation again, I'll have that Q inverse transpose equals Q, and if we take transpose a piece of W, okay, well, what do we do when we transpose? We're going to take our product, take the transpose of each piece, and write everything in reverse order. So we have this. Now, Q inverse transpose is Q. D transpose is D because it's diagonal. And then we have the Q transpose is Q inverse because orthogonal. This is just the definition of piece of W. So we have the piece of W symmetric. Now, that's a recipe. Let's find an orthonormal basis and then find our piece of W. Now, the space that we want to project onto is 1, 1. So I want an orthonormal basis for our one dimensional space. So that just means turn 1, 1 into a unit vector. So that becomes square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. I need a basis vector for the perpendicular direction. So that'll be given by minus 1, 1 and then we just turn into a unit vector. So we get minus square root of two over two, square root of two over two. Okay, you can check each of these are unit vectors, and if we take the inner product of V1 with V2, we get zero. So that's an orthonormal basis of R2. Now, we set up our Q matrix. We note that Q inverse is equal to Q transpose, so I'll leave it to you to check that. Then we just plug in. So we're gonna have Q, one, zero, 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 Q inverse, and I get one half, one half, one half, one half for our piece of W. We do the same computation for piece of W perp. Then we get one half minus a half minus a half, one half. And our next step is to check all of our properties. Now, four properties. We see by observation that PW, piece of W perp, are symmetric. We also see that their sum is equal to the identity matrix. If I square, say, piece of W, okay, we just multiply that out, we'll see that we're going to get 1 fourth plus 1 fourth in each entry, so we have a half in each entry, or we get piece of W back. Finally, if I take product, say, piece of W, piece of W perp, okay, we work that out, we get all zeros, so we have the zero matrix, again, as expected. Now, let's use these projection maps to decompose E1 into a direction parallel to 1, 1 and a direction perpendicular to 1, 1. So we apply our PW, PW perp to 1, 0. Applying PW, we get a half a half, which is a multiple of 1, 1. So that's going to live in W. So that works out. For the perp, okay, we get 1 half minus a half. Take the inner product with 1, 1, we get 0. So that's going to be in the perp of W. So that works out too. Now, if we add these together, we see that we get back our original vector one, zero. And if we take their inner product, we're gonna get zero, which is what we expect since one's in W, the other's in W perp.